Hello everybody. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Dr. Neary. I'll be giving you your video presentation uh, for lab this week, which is uh, lab number five, enzymes and metabolism. In this first short video, I want to talk a little bit about enzymes. Uh, enzymes are molecules, uh, almost always proteins, that catalyze or speed up chemical reactions. Okay, so let's consider uh, this chemical reaction that I've drawn on the board here. So um, on the y-axis here we have uh, G. G is simply the amount of energy that we have either in the reactants, those are the molecules going into the reaction, or the products, those are the molecules that are coming out of the reaction. And you can see here uh, we have reactants entering this chemical reaction with, with high energy, and we have products with low energy. So when we go from high energy to low energy, uh, that means uh, we have a, a negative change in free energy here. Okay? In other words, this means energy out. Exergonic reaction, right? Exergonic means we, we get energy out. Now, in most cases, exergonic reactions are going to tend to happen spontaneously. However, there's still an energy barrier that we have to overcome before that reaction can proceed spontaneously. That energy barrier is right here on the graph, okay? And that's called activation energy. So even though this is an exergonic reaction that should happen spontaneously, we need to overcome this energy barrier or activation energy in order for this reaction to proceed on its own. Now, when you think about it, uh, these activation energies are actually good things because they allow us to control uh, the rate of the reaction. Say, for example, look at your car, for example. Um, so in order to get combustion in your car, uh, we need a spark. We have spark plugs, right? So the spark uh, overcomes the activation energy for the combustion of the gasoline in your car, and, and that allows us to use it for energy. Okay, if we didn't have this energy barrier, then our cars, you know, all the gasoline in our cars would just spontaneously explode. Okay, and, and, and that's no good if, we, you know, if you want to use it for internal combustion and, and get around that, that's not a good thing. Okay, same thing for our bodies, right? Um, these, active, these energy barriers are actually good uh, because we can control uh, the metabolism of raw material for energy. Okay. Now, enzymes catalyze or speed up these, these reactions by lowering this activation energy. Okay. And how do they do that? Let, let's consider a very simple generic reaction. Say we have reactants A and B, okay, and they're going to react together to give us the product AB. Okay, so let's just say we have a beaker of water and we, we put A and B in that beaker. Now let's just say that my, my left hand, which is on your right, this is uh, reactant A, my right hand, which is on your left, this is reactant B. Okay, so they're floating around in solution in this water. Um, in order for a reaction to happen, first they have to encounter each other. Um, secondly, they're going to have to encounter each other oriented in, in, in the right way in space for a reaction to occur. And third, they're going to have to uh, encounter each other with enough kinetic energy for a, a reaction to take place. Okay, so, so how can we make that happen? Uh, one thing we can do is we can apply heat to the solution. Heat's going to make these things move around faster. They're going to encounter each other more often with more kinetic energy, and perhaps uh, uh, a chemical reaction is going to take place. Or we could add an enzyme. Okay, how, how is an enzyme going to help in this situation? Well, an enzyme can bind to both a and B, both reactants A and B. Okay, so it can bring them together closer physically in space. Okay, another thing it can do is, is when it binds them, it can bind them in the correct orientation for a reaction to occur. And a third thing it does is when it binds them, it distorts the shape of the reactants a little bit. Okay? This puts a strain on existing covalent bonds that's going to make them easier to break so that they can form new covalent bonds in the reaction. Okay, so what that's going to do, so this is the activation we have uh, in the absence of an enzyme. If we were to add an enzyme, that's going to lower 
this energy barrier. Lowering that energy barrier is going to uh, increase the rate of the reaction. It's going to make it go faster. And that's how enzymes work to catalyze reactions. They lower the activation energy. Okay. So that's the end of my first video presentation. Um, I'll uh, Hopefully I'll have about uh, two or three more short videos for you to view uh, before your lab. Um, have fun in lab this week, and I'll be back with another short video soon.